Hello everyone and welcome. If you're new to my channel, then welcome to Life in Notions. My name is Christine and in today's video, as you can see, I'm in my kitchen. And that's because I've decided today is the day at long last that I tackle my kitchen in terms of the KonMari method of decluttering and organizing. It's been 16 months since Tim and I completed the KonMari method for the first time. We did every item in our home and let me tell you, we ended up decluttering so much stuff. I've been going through the KonMari method for a second time because I wish to refine the choices we made last year and to make sure we are really keeping clutter at bay. So today I begin tackling the giant commoner category and the first subcategory I've decided to do in that is the kitchen. Marie Kondo tells us not to tackle our items room by room but rather by category. I'm choosing to do the whole kitchen in one go however because I already feel like it's really quite well organized. There's nothing I really want to change in terms of how we've got things put away. It's more a case of pulling things out to make sure I don't have any clutter. So I think what I'll do to begin is I will give you a very quick tour around the kitchen so you can see exactly what it looks like right now. And then I'm going to work my way around the room in an anti-clockwise fashion and empty the contents of each drawer one at a time. Oh, hello. And if you didn't know, you're new to our channel. We have two Alaskan Malamutes, Leela and Rumo, who have decided it's Zoomy time. Hello. which get used all the time and they're too big to comfortably fit in any of our cupboards. So you can see here, this is the bread maker that we use all the time and this is our instant pot pressure cooker. And then these are two parts of the set which I have, which are melamine and this is the big bowl and here is the big platter. And I keep them up here because they don't fit anywhere else. And they get used a lot. In fact, we put crumpets and muffins and bread and things that are currently in use in this bowl so it's easy to reach. So the first cupboard I will be tackling is this one. It lives in between the fridge and our oven and it holds things that we use whilst cooking very often. So it's got cooking oil, salt, pepper, some herbs and spices. Um, it's got some stock cubes, things like that. And so I'm going to empty it all and see what there is that sparks joy and should be kept and if there's anything to purge and let go of. Okay, so this is everything that I pulled out of that initial cupboard and you can see I've got my oils here, some soy sauce, salt and pepper, some cordials and then some herbs and spices. But most of our herbs and spices are actually kept in these really awesome magnetic containers that I kept on the side of the fridge labeled at the back if anyone's not sure what they are and um, yeah so I'm just going to go through everything really quickly and decide what sparks joy what I want to keep if there's anything expired let it go so let's see what we've got so that's the first cupboard completely done and this is what it looks like I have slightly changed the way it's organized but very little and I pulled out a few things which I will show you so here are the items which I am not putting back into the cupboard. We've got these cordials which nobody ever drinks and we've had them for years and years so they're going. I have these straws which do get used but I think I'm going to put them somewhere else. 
Same goes for this little jar which I painted years ago. That doesn't need to live there. This is an adorable little garlic storage pot, but the seal on this is so tight I can never open it, so I don't use it. I'm going to put this in my craft room and put something in it that I don't need to access very often, I think. I've got some time which I don't have space for in any of the containers in the cupboard or on the side of the fridge, so I'm going to put it with some other herbs I've got in our pantry cupboard. And finally, I've just got a little pot of chili sauce that came with a supermarket pizza that nobody's going to eat. So this next cupboard holds all of my kilner jars and glass containers for storing food and things. It's also got my mixing bowls and some placemats and coasters. Now normally this cupboard does not look like this, but at the moment we have run through all of our spare and stock supplies of food in our food cupboards. So what's happened is as we've emptied each jar, it's been washed up and put back in this cupboard to the point where we now have virtually no space left. We have not purchased anything new that is in this cupboard from when we did this a year ago. It's simply that we have eaten the food that was stored in these containers and haven't replaced it. So I'm going to pull everything out and see if there's anything I can let go of and make a little bit more space in here because this cupboard as it is right now does not spark joy. So I've moved all the contents from that cupboard onto the kitchen table and grouped them together so that I can really see how many I have of each type of item and it's quite ridiculous. So let's begin sorting. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to tackle are my Nigella Lawson mixing bowls. I absolutely love these and have had them years and years. They're in perfect condition and they spark lots and lots of joy. Let's see what's next. Okay, here I've got all of our leatherboard coasters and placemats and things from E to the table. They all spark joy, so I'm going to keep all of those. Now let's talk for a minute about these on our jam jars. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, ten of these jars. And I know that I've got a couple that I use for water colouring upstairs. Now we have all these jars because my mother-in-law brought some with her, I think, when she was here last time and had been strawberry picking and made some strawberry jam here. But also, Tim eats a lot of jam. So I'm actually um, not keen to keep these because they're not useful to me. I don't actually use them for anything. So I am happy to let all of these go. But what I'm doing is as I'm purging items as I declutter, I'm putting them all into one place on the windowsill behind where the camera is at the moment. And I'm going to ask Tim, if he's happy for me to let go of all things that I pull down. And if he isn't, we'll have a discussion about whether or not we need to keep something that I pulled out. Otherwise, it's all going to be recycled. So, um, this jar as well, I don't want to keep that. This is a little jar which is full of oil pourers, which are used with this bottle here. This used to hold homemade chilli oil and we've literally not made any chilli oil or used any of this stuff in years and years and years so I'm happy to let all this go. This is another jam jar which I painted that's going to be moved to the craft room so I'll put that here. I love my kilner jars, definitely keeping that. I love my ball mason jars, these wide mouth ones are amazing. And I love these. So we'll stay. This jar is actually a really strange um, size, and it's not the, it's not big enough to hold most bags of beans or anything like that. So I think I might put this in the craft room as well. Let's see if I can't use it there. All of these Kilner jars absolutely spark joy. They're not being used at the moment, but we need to go shopping and buy some foodstuffs, and I'm sure they'll get used again in no time. 
These get used a lot, these are our Kilmer cookie jars and whenever I bake any sweet treats they get put in these jars, it's just I haven't made any so far this week. Then we've got these two milk bottles which I like to decant milk into because I hate those plastic containers that you buy them in at the shop. I much prefer glass for everything. And then here I've got my um, storage containers which are all glass, they're made by Von Chef. And these are the accompanying lids. And there is one which I chipped. So I'm going to pull that aside because I know Tim doesn't like that we have a chipped one. So I'll see if he wants to let that go. So he can see all the items I'm wanting to let go of and then everything else sparks joy. So that is another cupboard dealt with and even though it's still quite full of Kilner jars it's a lot better than it was and as I say once we go shopping and actually stock up in a few bits and pieces we will use more of the jars so it's all good. So this is the contents from the cupboard which is on the right hand side of our oven and it's amazing isn't it just how much you could fit into such a small space. So let's see what there is and if there's anything to let go of. So here I've got lots of Pyrex, we're big fans of Pyrex and been using it for years and years. We've got two measuring jugs, I love them, that's why we have two, <laughs> I'm going to keep them both, they're amazing and I love them. This little plastic measuring cup is one that came free with our immersion blender, which is super old, it's all scratched and worn out, you can hardly see the markings anyway and because we've got these I never use this so I'm happy to let that go. Here we've got some mixing bowls which are really good, they're also great for if you need to do a bad marie style recipe, steam anything so I love those. This, this, ooh, I was ready to just think yes but actually I never use this ever so I think we will put this here. This definitely sparks joy. This was from Tim's grandmother many years ago. And so it's really old, it's been passed down through the family. Um, and we use it a lot for things like lasagna. It's perfect for that. We have here two glass Pyrex baking trays. We bought these quite recently and they're amazing. I needed to replace our old baking trays, which was sort of this style, because the non-stick was completely worn away and so after lots and lots of research we found these and they're amazing, I love them, absolutely nothing sticks to these and the best thing about them is they're dishwasher safe, so you just stick them in the dishwasher when they need cleaning. I love these and I highly recommend them, again they're by Pyrex. Our cheese grater sparks joy, we both like lots of cheese on our food. We've got our little weighing scale set here, which is perfect, I love that. Here we've got three wooden chopping boards. One is actually a bread board and one is a cheese board, but we use all three all the time. We've got this um, glass one, which is for meat, so we're keeping all of those. Here I've got my cake tins. And uh, there, yes, they start jewelry. This is actually my favourite one, but it doesn't have a removable bottom, which is why I'm keeping these ones. I love those. This is my favourite muffin tray ever. This was produced by the Great British Bake Off Merchandise Company. It is so good. Like the nonstick is absolutely amazing. I use this quite a lot. That definitely sparks joy. This is a really old judge baking sheet which has seen better days. I am going to keep it though because I don't feel it needs replacing just yet because this tray mostly gets used as a cookie sheet with grease free paper underneath so that's fine. I'm happy to let this go. Since we bought our new pizza trays we never use this one. Let me show you the new pizza trays. If you've seen our last video, you'll have seen Tim making his pizza recipe. And we now use these Pyrex non-stick pizza trays. And the base has come out so crispy and delicious and just cooked all the way through really evenly, which is amazing given 
how awful our oven is. <laughs> so these are amazing. I highly recommend the Clarex pizza pans. Then I've got these two roasting pans, which I bought in the co-op many, many years ago. And this one is actually fine. This one is actually getting really quite worn out. So it's okay for now, but I'm going to keep an eye on this because I think it will need replacing quite soon. And then here, for some reason, must have been for a project that I've forgotten all about, we've got these disposable tin foil roasting trays. I honestly cannot remember what I bought these for. <gasps> yes, I do. It's when we tried to make our own donuts and I thought it would be a brilliant idea to freeze the donut dough because we didn't want to make that many donuts in one go. And that was a total disaster, by the way. Don't freeze your donut dough. I am going to put these elsewhere because they don't need to be in the kitchen. They can be somewhere out of the way because they've never been used in forever. And finally, I've got two loaf pans. I've got this one, which came with a set from the car, which is really good. And this is my favorite one. This is silicon, and um, it means that you don't need to use any additional grease. So everything will just pop out, and it cooks really evenly. I was quite skeptical about um, baking using silicon initially because I thought, you know, plastic, not a big fan of plastic, as you may have gathered. Um, but I really like this. It actually does a fantastic job and sparks joy. So that's everything from here. Let me put it all away. So what you just missed there is Tim waltzing into the kitchen and stating that I was not allowed to get rid of this because apparently he likes to use it as a lid on top of the plates of food that he microwaves. And apparently, no, he won't make do with anything else, so this has to stay. Oh well, I have got to go ahead to get rid of these things though, so I guess that's something. So this is what the cupboard looks like post decluttering. And you can see I've got most of the food prep items on the top shelf, so I've got my mixing bowls and the chopping boards and the Pyrex jugs, and then at the bottom there I've got my bakeware as well as the weighing scales and the cheese grater just because they don't fit comfortably on that top shelf. So next up is the pan cupboard which is situated to the left of the oven. I'm going to empty it all out and see what sparks joy. So here are the contents out of the pots and pans cupboard from the left hand side of the oven. So let's start here. This definitely sparks joy. This is my food processor, which I bought for myself when I was a student at university, so it is really, really old. In fact, you can see it's yellowed with age, but it still works great. I love it, and I will be keeping it. And this is the accompanying blender and attachments. This is Tim's very powerful ice crushing blender, which he really loves for smoothies and stuff, so we'll be keeping that. And he actually broke the little plastic bit that fits in the top there to stop everything coming out when it's switched on. Um, but this tiny shot glass actually fits exactly perfectly. So it's all good, we'll be keeping that. This is a beautiful steamer set by Stella. And I absolutely love this, I use this a lot. Definitely sparks joy. This is my crock pot slow cooker, which again, I use all the time and I love it. And I particularly like that this one you can use not only as a slow cooker, but also as a normal crock pot in the oven or on the hob as well. So minimal mess and minimal fuss to prepare delicious meals. This is actually the base from our original pressure cooker, which died about 10 years ago. And we got rid of the lid and everything because it was utterly useless to us. But we kept this because it's a really large, heavyweight pan. And it's actually the biggest pan we have and we use this a lot. So that's Mark's Joy and that's staying. This is a set of saucepans from Tim's mother. She gave it to us when they upgraded their kitchen and put in an induction hob. These pans don't work in induction, but we have gas. So they're perfect for us and these are great. They are definitely going to stay because they spark joy and these are the accompanying lids. Although, ah, this is a tiny little saucer which Tim picked up at a 
charity shop to use instead of a trivet when he started trying to make treacle sponge pudding before Christmas last year. But we now have an actual trivet which came with our instant pot pressure cooker. So this is going to go. Then I've got two large saucepans which work great and I really like them. They're by Tefl and I'm happy with those. They spark joy. These two smaller ones. They actually never get used, so I'm going to let go of both of these. This is my salad spinner by OXO, and I love it. I use this a lot. And then over here I've got a strainer, which is perfectly fine, very useful. And a really old colander. Tim wants to upgrade this at some point soon, but I'm quite happy with it. I like it, sparks joy. And this is our wok, which we don't use too often. We're not hugely into stir fries and things, but when we do want them, at least we have that which works very well. And then I brought a Mexican bowl here, which is heavy ceramic. And it was a gift from some family members for Christmas many years ago. Definitely sparks joy of keeping that. And this is a microwavable steamer, which is really great if you don't want to prepare too much in one go. But actually, since we've got the Stella set here, we never use this anymore, so I'm going to let this go. So that's everything that Sparks Joy put back in the pan cupboard. Time to move on to the under sink cupboards. So this is everything that came out from that little cupboard underneath the sink. I've got first aid stuff which I went through just the other day and everything in here is very useful and we need to have it. It's in date and everything's fine so I'm going to keep all of those things. Next I've got some things to keep wood clean and polished so I've got mineral oil which I use to condition our chopping boards and some furniture cream and furniture polish for this wooden table and some other um, pieces of wooden furniture throughout the house and I really like these, they definitely spark joy. These are old dish brushes, which um, I used to keep the um, dog fountain clean. I'm actually going to let go of this one because this one's totally worn out now. Um, this one is still okay for cleaning dog things, so that's fine. We use the Method washing up liquid in Clementine to do the dishes, and I think it's the best washing up liquid I've ever tried. I love it. And we're actually on an Amazon subscription so that every few months we get delivered what we need to keep us going and we save a lot of money that way as well. So we just had a delivery and so we've got um, enough washing up liquid to keep us going for the next three months or so. This definitely sparks joy. This is the Almond Castile Soap by Dr. Bronner's. It's organic and it's an amazing product. If you don't know about Castile Soap, I'll link below my natural cleaning products video in which I talk all about this. But for the most part, I use this diluted to keep the surfaces of the kitchen very clean and I also use it when mopping the floor. This is the Method um, multi-surface cleaner for the kitchen and this is Clementine as well and I think it's really nice, it smells lovely. Does a good job but it's not as good as diluted Castile soap in my opinion, especially for cleaning the hob on the oven. I think the Castile soap does a far superior job. Then I've got some rubbing alcohol which I use for sanitizing things and also for keeping glass really clean and shiny. These are our current dish brushes. This one is a scrubby brush by Lakeland and we use this for like burn on stuff on pans and things. This is the OXO dish brush. I recently went through and purged a whole bunch of really old dish towels and these are what's left. And I absolutely love these all, and you'll see that I actually fold them KonMari style in this little apple carton that I thought was cute and decided to hang on to for this very purpose. And usually in the cupboard underneath the dish towels is a folded up apron, which is actually Tim's, and he's supposed to wear it when he makes um, pizza and things because he tends to throw flour everywhere and get covered in it but he very rarely uses it. So I'm actually going to put this aside and ask him if he wants to keep this because maybe he doesn't. So I'll put that to one side for now. When it comes to cleaning ovens, I've tried lots of different things from the very chemically to the very natural, but at the moment this is what I prefer to use. This is by Lakeland and this is the oven cleaning gel which came with this 
um, brush and it works so well, it's so easy to use and it's such an effective cleaner, it's absolutely brilliant, so definitely sparks joy. And then I keep a couple of magic erasers because I'm really bad for scraping the vacuum cleaner head against my appliances and leaving black marks and I found the only thing that will remove those is um, magic erasers so they definitely spark joy and I always have some on hand and I keep more in my cleaning cupboard in the hallway as well. And then we don't use we hardly ever use kitchen roll but I always like to have some just in case. I think this particular roll has been on the go for months and months and months but it is handy every now and then for the most part though I use microfiber cloths I have different ones for different tasks and all my kitchen microfiber cloths are white so they don't get used to clean anywhere else in the house and I keep them folded up again KonMari style in these little baskets in Scotland recycling is such a big thing and these are bags provided by our local council for food scraps and the way it works is the council gives you a special bin and these bags which you get free and you put all your food waste in these bags and then put those in with your garden waste wheelie bin and that gets collected by the council every couple of weeks and what that means is that you are not putting any food waste into your kitchen bin which is fantastic because then your kitchen bin never ever smells bad and we empty out our food waste scrap bin every day or every other day depending what's in it and how full it is so we get through quite a lot of these but they're fabulous and I love them so that's everything that I've decided sparks joy and that I wish to keep back in the cupboard the cupboard on the left hand side underneath the kitchen sink is a bit of an awkward space because it has the waste disposal unit taking up a lot of room in there so this is the cupboard where we keep things that don't really fit anywhere else but we do use quite often so I will pull everything out and go through all of that. So here are the contents of the left hand cupboard from underneath the kitchen sink and there is absolutely nothing that I wish to get rid of. Everything sparks joy, it's useful, it works really well and so I'm going to keep all of them and put them all back. So that's everything back in that cupboard too. You can see I've got the oven gloves hanging on the inside of the door, they're on little command hooks and then just tucked away on the left I have the oak serving platters at the back. We've got the vases because Tim buys me a lot of flowers and I like to have them in the kitchen. And then we've got our dog bowls as well as the wire cooling racks which are on the very right hand side. I've been through everything in this drawer and I love all of it. I am extremely fussy when it comes to cutlery but I love all of this. Every piece of silverware in here is fantastic and we've also got some very sharp cutting knives which we like to keep here as well and it's all well organized because Tim actually made me this bespoke cutlery organizer according to my design I drew out what I wanted and then he created it using foam board and vinyl wallpaper samples and I absolutely love it. So that's this drawer decluttered and it's again organized using bespoke um, dividers made of foam board and wallpaper samples and so the way it's organized is here we've got things that you use for food prep and stuff and then here it's tin openers, garlic press, the immersion blender and the back right there that is for the bits and pieces, the different blades for our KitchenAid and here we've got some IKEA clips for keeping bags sealed and underneath we've got some elastic bands and then this is where we keep things for measuring, so measuring cups and measuring spoons. And then here is what I have pulled out of that drawer that I don't wish to keep. The last drawer down is what I guess you would call a junk drawer. It's just a collection of all sorts of stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else but we still want to keep. I'm going to pull everything out and see what we've got. Okay, so that is the junk drawer done as well. It may not look amazing, but it is reasonably well organized. In here I keep dishwasher tablets because this is the dishwasher and this is what we call the dishwasher zone because we have our cutlery and our crockery 
really near the dishwasher. In here, into the jar, remember I pulled that out of my jar cupboard at the beginning. That's now filled with cocktail sticks and things because they were just in a plastic bag. This tin holds plastic and freezer bags. And then I've got little bits and pieces. Here I've got a container full of accessories for icing. And underneath that, I've got all of my cookie cutters. Here I've got my little dog biscuit set with recipes and cool dog and bone shaped cookie cutters. And then underneath I've got some straws and cheesecloth and napkins and things. So it's all quite well organized with the stuff that we use the most often at the front and the least often things stored at the back. So these are the items which I've pulled out of the junk drawer. We've got a waiter's friend corkscrew thingy because we actually have three and I think that one is the least practical of all of them. We have this little contraption which is supposed to seal fizzy drinks, you know when you open your bottle of soda and it goes flat, well this you pump it up and it's supposed to stop your carbonated drink going flat but we never use it so that's going and then here I've got bits and pieces from a sippy cup that broke and I actually have a couple anyway so I'm not going to keep those. I've got a really old um, tin opener that doesn't work very well and I actually had a newer one so I've actually taken this out and put the newer one into the middle drawer. And then here is a nice lolly set which Tim bought years ago and he never uses it. These upper cabinets hold our plates and bowls and you can see the top right shelf also holds teas, coffees and mugs. Now Tim and I do not drink hot drinks ever whatsoever. That shelf is dedicated to items that our guests or visitors may wish to use whilst they're with us. If it was up to us we'd actually get rid of the whole lot but <laughs> don't want to be inhospitable. So I've already gone through this cupboard and everything you see is what sparks joy or is necessary and we're going to keep. I have pulled out this plate here which Tim has had for so long but it has a chip at the top and it's had that as long as I can remember but today he said I could let it go. And the other item which I pulled out is this little small half size mug which I don't know if you can see, but it has a ceramic frog in the bottom of it, which totally freaks out people if they're not expecting it. So I'm actually going to be letting this go as well. I have just finished going through the glassware cabinet. And as you can see, I pulled out a number of glasses onto the counter there. And they're all glasses that we'll be letting go of. The two little Grosch glasses have been through the dishwasher and actually the prints come off really badly and they make Tim angry every time he sees them so he's happy to let them go. And then the other glasses are just odd glasses um, and the end one there actually broke in the dishwasher which is a real shame so I've now only got five of those instead of six. So we'll need to try and replace that when we can. So these are our food cupboards. All of the food that doesn't live in the fridge or freezer in our house lives here. This is all sort of dried and tinned goods. And this cupboard here is all baking products, baking ingredients like flours and sugars, honey, um, all that sort of thing. And I've actually been through this already. I went through everything at the weekend and there is nothing expired, nothing out of date. And as you can see, this one is a little bit there. Like I said, it used to have a lot more of the Kilner jars full of goods and they're empty at the moment because we've been shopping our pantry and trying to use up foods that were nearly expired or had just expired and needed to be eaten. And so we're quite low on supplies in here. The baking cupboard though is quite full because we get um, the flour that we use for a lot of our breads and pizzas from Amazon. And we just had a massive delivery of, I think it was something like 10 kilos of that. So that cupboard is now extremely full. And we also replenish some of our sugars and things because we use a lot of different types of sugars for different things. So these cupboards are already decluttered and I'm not going to reorganize them because I'm quite happy with them as they are. So that means that I have now completely finished going through the kitchen. 
So that is the kitchen completely decluttered. It's not exactly reorganized because like I said at the beginning, we actually really like the way it's all organized as it is. And you know, we've got all the things that we use to prep and cook with really near the oven and the fridge. All the things that come in and out of the dishwasher on a daily basis are stored as close to the dishwasher as possible. The cleaning products are under the kitchen sink. All the food is in one area and so on. So we're not going to change anything there, but I have decluttered so much more than I expected. Again, this has been the theme for the whole of my journey going through the KonMari method for a second time, 16 months after doing it the first time. And it just goes to show, even if you think you're being mindful and keeping an eye on clutter, sometimes things creep in without you really realizing it. I mean, for example, when we bought the Instant Pot, it came with all these little accessories, the little rice measuring cup and the rice paddles and things, stuff that we never ever wanted and don't use. And so instead of just throwing it in a drawer, I really should have disposed of it as soon as I realized that it wasn't useful to us. So anyway, at least I've done it now. So I will show you what I'm going to be letting go of. All the things that I'm about to show you will be leaving our home for good and it feels amazing. Above the kitchen sink on this very deep windowsill, I have filled the space with all of the items which I purged from the different cupboards and drawers today. This is all the clutter and it's all going to be leaving the house tomorrow for good and will never darken our doors again. One of my favorite things about the KonMari method is that you store all similar items together and of course you make sure that everything has a home. So once you've purged all the clutter from your belongings, you're left with what you really love, need and works well. And then of course you get to organize it so all like items are in one place together. Space allowing, of course. What this means is that not only is it super quick and easy for me to find anything I'm looking for within seconds, but so is Tim, because he knows that if he's looking for a saucepan, he looks in the saucepan cupboard. If he's looking for a chopping board, he opens the cupboard where all the chopping boards are stored, and so on, so it makes logical sense to both of us. Now that the clutter's been removed from the kitchen, it feels even lighter and airier than it did before, and it's such a good feeling. So if you haven't decluttered your kitchen yet, I strongly urge you to carve out some time for yourself and do it as well. Now you'll have seen that I decluttered one cupboard and one drawer at a time, and I moved around the room in an anti-clockwise fashion. If you, however, do not have a kitchen where the organization of your things is as you'd like it and the flow isn't quite right, maybe you've got food in a cupboard where you'd rather have plates, or I don't know. All I'm saying is that if the organization isn't how you like it to begin with, this is a fantastic opportunity to empty all of the drawers, all your shelves and cupboards in one go declutter everything, and then decide from scratch how you would like to have it all organized. It's taken time to get it to the point where we're really happy with everything, but I think we've definitely reached the click point in the kitchen. We're very happy with the organization. We're now very happy with everything that we've kept and delighted with all the things that we're getting rid of. If you haven't already, definitely check out our brand new website. It's at lifeinnotions.com and I'll put a link down below. The website has been a work in progress for the last few weeks and we just launched it a few days ago. So it really is brand new, but it's already packed full of blog posts, articles, photos, videos, and even a shop. We've covered a range of topics, so hopefully there's something for everyone. And if you're interested in the KonMari method, there's plenty about that too. So please do check it out and let us know what you think. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Take care and we'll see you in our next video. Oh,